Good morning, and let me welcome you to Salisbury Baptist Church this morning. If you're joining us live here on Zoom, if you're joining us on the phone lines this morning, a very, very warm welcome to you. Great to have you with us in our worship this morning. If you're catching up with us later on online and on social media, a warm welcome to you all. And as we have been saying through these weeks, where we're doing church differently. Uh, if there is anything that we can pray for you or do for you, please do let us know. Uh, we would love to be able to help if we can. And we have a great God who we can bring our needs to, uh, who we can call upon. And we would love to stand with you in prayer in these different and challenging days. So do be in touch with us if we can be of help to you in any way. We're going to begin our service with prayer, so let's come and let's pray together. And indeed, let's ask that the Lord may meet us in our worship this morning. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the God that you are, the God who does meet us in our every situation, whether that situation is one of sadness or joy. Uh, that you're a God who comes and presences yourself with your people by your spirit. And Lord, as we meet in this different way as church, as SBC and friends and others gathering with us this morning and later on in the week. Lord, we thank you that because of the greatness of the God that you are, none of us need to go from this time of worship without receiving from your gracious hand. So, Lord, we open our hearts and our lives to you this morning in worship, asking, Lord, that you indeed would come and journey with us and meet us, we pray and ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Laura and friends are going to be leading us in our worship this morning as we sing together, and we're going to hear two songs as they lead us in sung worship this morning. So I'm going to hand over to them and to the recording. Thank you.
Father, I pray that we would be those who are captivated afresh by you this morning in our worship. That, Lord, the reality of our lives where you desire and graciously choose to meet us, Lord, that that won't captivate our hearts. That won't captivate our minds, but you will this morning. That we will see through that perspective of who you are the world that we are part of, the uncertainty that we feel, the doubts and fears that we have, that we are able to give them to you, a sovereign God who is almighty and overall. Oh, meet us. Give us that perspective, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This time of, of COVID has been one that's meant for us lots of change, doing things differently. Sometimes those things have been difficult and hard and challenging, upsetting and challenging. And yet in all of that, we've been mindful that God has been meeting and God has been working, not only within his church, but within the world. And across the nation, churches and Christian organizations are reporting the number of people who are looking and seeking after questions and answers and looking to faith and looking to Jesus. And one of the exciting things that has been happening in these last months is the, the huge numbers that have been joining Alpha courses online. That course that looks at the faith and who Jesus is and asks us those important big questions of life. And so we're going to listen to a, a video uh, about Alpha Online. And then Wendy's going to share a little bit about how we as SBC uh, can play our part in our Alpha Online that's coming to us very soon. So Lindsay's going to play the video. And then Wendy, Wendy's going to share with us. Thanks. Alpha Online is a free course designed to give you the space and time to ask the big and often challenging questions about life, faith and meaning. No filters, just honest discussion. To attend an Alpha Online, all you have to do is sign up and then join a weekly online call, all from the comfort of your home. Everything else is taken care of by your hosts. So feel free to pour yourself a drink, get comfy, get your laptop ready, and you are good to go. What have you got to lose? Try Alpha online. Morning, everyone. Um, just like to confirm the exciting news that SPC will be running an Alpha course online this autumn. Uh, the course is going to start on Wednesday, the 4th of November. The first course uh, is going to be, is there more to life than this? Each week it's going to run for an hour from eight o'clock till nine o'clock in the evening. Uh, there will be six sessions in all. The venue is going to be the comfort of your own home. So there's no traveling out on dark nights to get there. Um, we'll be watching the course together. We'll be sharing and having the chance to chat, uh, ask questions, get to know each other. Everyone will be receiving a booklet. Try and have it up the right way. Um, so please pray for the course about who you may invite. Uh, if you have any questions or you'd like to register, uh, please go on alphacoursesbc at gmail.com. Many thanks. So maybe if you've been in that place of uh, people asking you questions about how does your faith to relate to what we're going through as a nation and as a world this time, uh, well then perhaps there's a chance for us to go back into those conversations and to have the courage to invite somebody to join that course and to discuss those big and important issues uh, with uh, the team as we start Alpha in November. Do we pray in about that? It's really important. Uh, at this time. We're going to hear now from uh, our reading, which comes from Ephesians chapter 4, as we continue in that series in Ephesians, and then I was going to be bringing us God's word this morning, so I'm going to hand over to the, uh, the reading, which Matt's doing for us this morning, 
and then over to IO. Thank you. Living as children of light, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the, in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality, so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with the continual lust for more. You, however, do not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truth truthfully to his neighbour, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwelcome, wholesome, unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, virulent and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, good morning, God's people, and um, uh, every member of Salisbury Baptist Church and everyone um, watching us from all parts of the world. Uh, it's a great privilege to be in God's presence and to share this morning. Shall we have a word of prayer together? But I will thank you so much for your grace and your and your plan and purpose for us. Thank you for who you are because we know you love us so much. Thank you because of all you are to us. Thank you for guiding us, for keeping us and giving us grace to live our day-to-day -day lives. As we share together this morning, let us hear from you, O oh God, both from the person sharing and everybody listening. Let the word of God come to us powerfully and challenge us and make us better people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, so, so still continuing from um, our study um, in Ephesians, um, today we are looking through Ephesians chapter 4, and we are going through verses 17 through 31. And in these verses of Ephesians, Paul uh, gives down-to-earth exhortations to Christians, and these have concrete implications in our everyday living. It focuses on unity, it focuses on purity of God's people, and how Christ shapes our relationships in the home and in our workplaces. And if we look at this, it fits very well with our vision of being scattered servants, servants who represent God in our various corners in the community, be it in our places of work or where we live or everywhere that we find ourselves. We are ambassadors of Christ representing Christ everywhere that we find ourselves. So chapters, chapter 4, verse 17 through 31, focuses on us no longer living according to our old life, but living the new life in Christ in very practical areas of our attitudes, our speech, and our lifestyle. That's the principal focus of our discussion this morning. And if we start with 17 through 19 of the scriptures that we read, our Christian life is meant to affect every aspect of our living and lifestyle. It's not, I'm a Christian, 
um, on Sunday or when, when I'm in the fellowship of my brethren, or when I get to my place of work, I no longer become a Christian. Or when I get to my, my neighborhood, I no longer is a Christian. I no longer am a Christian. It's a transformation that is made possible by the power of God, by the Holy Spirit of God. And it is a way of life. Christianity is a way of life. Living like Christ is a way of life. Paul was challenging the Ephesians and all Christians today, including you and me, to make a break with their past lifestyle and the value system of the world around us. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 and 24 says, Put off your old self, put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. And, you know, I'll just use this, um, this story to illustrate what, just to give an illustration. Imagine a man who lived most of his life as a thief, as an armed robber. And he did that for a long time. And whenever he was going out on his operations, he had a way of dressing to disguise himself. He had a mask, a big ma I mean, a mask and uh, a special regalia that he wore. And he had his guns and weapons that he uses to, to, to terrorize people and make them afraid. And he did that for a long time until he was arrested. And when he was arrested, he was sent to prison. Um, when he went to prison, he served his jail term. But while he was in prison, he, he, he changed. He became a new person. And it was clear to everybody in the, all the wardens and everybody in the prison that this is a new person. He, he's changed from his old ways. Uh, he's going to be a better person in the society. And after he left prison, he decided to join uh, the police force and said, yeah, I'd rather go and use my experience to enforce the law um, rather than go back to my way of life. So in this new way of life, he woke up every morning and he wore his police uniform, looks at himself in the mirror, he feels excited going into the day to make sure that, you know, law and order is enforced in the society where he lived. And he had a supervisor whom he reported to on a daily basis as he does his work. Then one morning, uh, when he was about going out, he just remembered, oh, I still have my old armed robbery regalia. And then he went there. He saw his face, he saw his mask, his mask that he uses to disguise. And he put it on, put on his regalia again, his clothes and everything that he used in the past. And he went to look at himself in the mirror. And the memories of the days when he was that wanted robber came back to him again. When he was you know, going from place to place, pointing guns at people, taking their things, you know, taking people's things and doing all sorts of things. And those memories continue to come back to him again at that point in his life. And as he stood there, right behind him was his boss, whom he reported to. And he went, when he turned back and he saw the boss, he felt embarrassed. And the boss said, no, don't worry, I'll read um, the response of his boss. The boss told him, put on your new coat. Do you understand what is happening? What is expected of you is not just a wardrobe change, but rather drop all your allegiances to the old ways of living. You have a new identity now. It has been given to you. Be grateful and live up to it. This story is... I mean, just an illustration, but it's, it's, it happens, it's, 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 it's typical, I mean, it's the kind of things that happen to us as Christians. We live our lives every day as Christians, but sometimes we still get drawn back into our old ways. We still get drawn back into our old, old, old thinking, old activities that we have decided to put behind. God is remind, telling us today, through his word, that put off those old things and everything that has to do with it. Maybe if this robber had kept off all his uniforms, had 
thrown thrown them away or burnt them or dumped on something to them, maybe those memories won't come back again. Everything that entangles us to our past, everything that makes us to, to want to go back to our sinful past, we should as much as possible, by the grace of God, by the help of the Holy Spirit, take them far away from us. Put off the old, put on the new. This, of course, requires our cooperation with the Holy Spirit who does live in us. We must allow him on a daily basis to continue to renew our minds and help us to stay focused on this journey of Christianity, on this journey of living like Christ. I'll just sing this song briefly because I, I love the song and just, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> the master has come and he calls us to follow the track of the footprints he leaves on our way far over the mountain and through the deep hollow. The path leads us on to the mansions of day. The master has called us the children who fear him, who march neath Christ's banner, his own little band. We love him and seek him we long to be near him and rest in the light of his beautiful land hallelujah you and i have been called from our old ways to the new ways god has done everything that needs to be done he's given us the gift of the holy spirit let us live our lives to please him every day. Verse 25 says, Put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. Speaking the truth is important. Jesus Christ is the truth. But the emphasis of Paul in this verses of scripture is for us to speak the truth in love. Love without truth is a lie. But truth without love is a weapon. I'll say that again. Love without truth is a lie, but truth without love is a weapon. There is a great maxim to live by, which is, before you say anything at all, ask yourself these three questions. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it kind? When we have this at the back of our minds, we will be able to say the truth to our neighbors. We will be able to say the truth to anybody with the, trying to help them rather than trying to bring them down. We have said the truth sometimes and we have said it and it has made people worse than before we told them the truth. So what God is telling us is say the truth, but say the truth in love. All things are lawful. First Corinthians 10 3. For me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. I can say anything. Some people say, I, can, I say it the way it is. I say the truth the way it is. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. That thing that you're saying, will it bring a brother down? Will it edify a brother? Will it make somebody better? Or make somebody leave the church? Truth must be said in law to make people better and to edify the church of Christ. We will listen to a song and then we will continue afterwards. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Yeah, as we continue from where we stopped, um, we go to verse 26 and 27. Um, this verse is talked about anger and says, In your anger, do not sin. The thing, key, key thing here is that anger is not a sin, it is not wrong to be angry. We worship a God who himself gets angry, so we must. We mustn't feel guilty if things make us angry. It is an emotion that human beings have because we are made in the image of God. The crucial thing is what's, what will we do with our anger? Will our anger lead us to say unkind things? Will our anger lead us to do things that, are, that we will regret after, I mean, looking back? You know that story? Many of you might know that story. Try those that follow football of this very great footballer in his time and undoubtedly in world history who played for France. And he, he came out of retirement to help France to qualify for the World Cup in 2006. And France made it to the finals. The final match was between France and Italy in 2006. And it was a draw at the end of the first half, second half, there was no winner went into half time, um, extra time, and um, extra time, the first half went, no winner, it was a very tough match. And the second half of the extra time, about just a few minutes to leave, to finish that match, there was something that happened between this great footballer and, the, the, and an Italian defender. And out of anger, this man, you know, went and he head booted the Italian defender, and the Italian defender, and, and, he, and the Italian defender that, that fell down, and he was sent out of the match, a few minutes to the end of the match. Maybe, we don't know, maybe France would have won that match. He would have had an opportunity to lift the World Cup. But that was truncated forever because of that one minute or two minutes of anger. We don't know what happened, but he was angry and he took an action in anger. And that was the, did not give a good result. And a lot of times we just see that things that we do when we are angry, they, are, they, they, they come back to us most times with regrets because most times you don't take the right decisions when you are angry. What do we do when you're hungry? I told you earlier, it's not a sin, but we need to allow God, the Spirit of God, to help us. That is the time we should talk to the Spirit of God, Spirit of God, Holy Spirit of God. God, you just need to help me to keep my mouth shut, if possible, not to take any decision that I regret at this period of anger. Anyone struggling with anger today, I pray for you that God, who is all-powerful, will help you to overcome it in the name of Jesus. Seek help, seek counsel, seek medical help if you're struggling with it, because if managing anger is a problem, then 
we might have problems in other areas. May we not have such problems in Jesus' name. Verse 28 says, Anyone who has been stealing must steal no more, but must work so that they might have something to share with those in need. And as a community of faith, we should be examples in honesty, we should be examples in integrity, we should be examples in living upright in the community that we find ourselves. God blesses the work of our hands. God does not encourage laziness. There is dignity in labor. The blessings of the Lord maketh rich, and he added no sorrow to it. That is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. All that we have, all that we have, all that we are, we, 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 I mean, it was given to us by God. And when we realize that everything that we have is given to us by God, then we will know that we are stewards, we are managers of these things. And we should use it to bless those who are in need and worship the Lord. Going to verse 29 to 30, he said, talking about the words that come out of your mouth. Let the words that come out of your mouth be those that edify. Let people listen to you and be blessed. Let's learn to talk about, let's, let's learn to be positive. Let's people be positively affected by our words rather than negatively affected by our words. You know, even the Bible says, let the weak say what? I am strong. Hallelujah. And the poor say, I am rich. What it's saying is that you speak into your situation. You speak positive things into your situation. You speak positive things into your life and the lives of your children. There is this common thing that we do in my parts of Africa, in southern Nigeria. I know most part of Nigeria also do this, something similar. When you wake up in the morning and you say your prayers or whatever you do, or you go, I mean, the first thing after saying your prayers and Children go to greet their parents and say, good morning, daddy, good morning, mommy. When you greet your, after greeting your parents, you use that time to say positive things into the life of your children. You shall be great in life. You shall succeed in life. The Lord shall make you prosperous. Everything you lay your hands upon shall prosper. You shall be head always. You shall not be the tail. Wherever you go, the Lord shall be with you. You know, this is, these are things we do. We still, we, we, we do it every day. Every day, we, 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 we do it. Use that opportunity to speak positive and powerful things into the life of your children. You can do the same. You can do the same whether your children are old or young. I mean, you can do the same for everybody. Let the words that come out our mouth, let there be words that are seasoned with salt, that bless people and speak into situations that praise the Lord. Verse 31 to 32 also talked about getting rid of all bitterness. I mean, just a nice summary of everything. Rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ in God forgave you. This is a good summary, but I just want to end with the issue of forgiveness. Forgiveness is something that, we you know, it's, it's, it's a very difficult teaching of the Word of God. And just praying that anyone that is struggling to forgive, that God will give you that grace, that God will give me that grace to put aside that thing that hurts me, that person that hurt me, and forgive and let it go. I know it is a difficult thing to do. Someone kills your child. Someone takes that thing that is valuable to you. Someone does something to you that means that, that hurts, hurts you so much. How do you find a place to forgive a person? It is possible by the grace of God. That grace the Lord shall give to you and shall give to me in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray together?
Father, this day, thank you for your word that you've sent to us, teaching us again, reminding us again how we should live our lives. We know that in our power we can do all this successfully, but we know that by your grace we can. By our determination and your grace we can. Therefore, Lord, give us this grace. We are determined. We want to serve you. We want to live for you. Give us this grace to be able to succeed in these things that you have outlined for us. We pray for your children as we go, as we, as we go to continue to live our lives as scattered servants in our places of work, in our neighborhood, that we will stand out for Christ, that we will live for Christ. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, thanks to, to Matt for reading God's word and for Ayo for opening that up to us in both an challenging and encouraging way this morning and for Laura and the team as they continue to lead us in our sun worship this morning. We're going to come towards the communion table this morning and come and meet around the Lord's table. And as we do so, Alan is going to now lead us in our prayers as we come to Almighty God. So I'm going to hand over to Alan now. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, encourages the people there to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Let's come before God our Father in prayer. Oh God our Father, we come to you this morning as your people, people with all the needs that we've had over the years, your people who need you from day to day, from week to week. Lord, we come to you this morning and we realize that the world in which we live is, is not a particularly happy place. We've been reminded that we do so much from the comfort of our, of our own homes. One of the things that we do from the comfort of our, of our own homes is to listen to the news. And we pray for those places in the world where there is unrest. We pray for, pray for Belarusia, for Nagorno-Karabakh, for Syria, Lebanon, for Yemen, for Thailand, and for Burma. Lord, we, these countries seem to be constantly cursed with war and death, with anguish and anger. anger. But we're reminded, Lord, that wherever your people are, there is hope for the world. We pray, Lord, that in all of these countries, your people would be seen to be working. Your people would be seen to be doing what you want for the world, not what other political or violent people would want. We look at the world and we see that wherever there is wrong, there are also your people seeking to bring change and comfort. Lord, we look at the world and we see that despite COVID and all the impact that it has had, the world is still as it, as it was. Old problems unsolved, new problems rising, old hurts remembered, new hurts being made. And so, Lord, we pray for all of those in our world who are involved in the governance of the world. We pray that your word, your will, your way would be seen to be the way for the world. We pray for our own country. We pray for the problems of COVID in our country. We pray for wisdom to be shown by those who are in power. We thank you for our government. It may not be the government, the people necessarily that we would want as our governors, but nevertheless, we live in a free country and our government is by and large open and accountable. Lord, we pray for our government. We ask for wisdom, wisdom in all their doings. We pray for our local government. And we've seen in the last week that the local government 
has power, has authority, can decide for all of us what will happen. We ask, Lord, that at a local level, in our towns and cities, countryside, we ask, Lord, for good government, government that does the best for all of us. And we pray for all those agencies of our governments, both national and local. We pray for our schools and hospitals. We pray for all the services. We pray, Lord, that you would be with them as they do jobs that perhaps we would not like to do. We pray for all of those who are involved in the care of people who are ill from COVID or from whatever source. We pray for business and for work. Lord, we know that this COVID crisis has affected so many people in their work. We pray for all of those who have been made unemployed at this time. We pray for all of those people who are seeking to keep their people in work. We pray for all those who are struggling to maintain services, to maintain a business. We pray for all of those who are involved in that so many different things in our country to enable a better life for all of us. We pray especially for those who are involved in the management of hospitals and healthcare systems. We pray for the staff who care for the patients. We pray for the scientists who are fighting against the virus. We pray for all of those who are involved in testing. We ask, Lord, for your strength in their lives, in their work. And we ask, Lord, that wherever there is an opportunity, each one of us would do our part to help and to care for other people to encourage, to strengthen. And we pray for ourselves as a church. Lord, some of us still have not got used to the fact that church is on a screen. We ask, Lord, that you would be with our church, not in a selfish way, but in the way that we want to know you through our church. We pray for all those people in our church, perhaps people we haven't seen for weeks and months. We pray for people who are in need, people who are not coping, people who are struggling in this, at this time. We pray that you would be with them in their coping, that you would be with them as they struggle against the, the problems of life. We pray for those who are mourning, especially the two families that. Uh, we've heard about the last couple of days and weeks. We ask Lord for your peace in their lives. Mm -hmm. We ask Lord too that you would be with our church leadership. We thank you for the leadership that they have given. We thank you for the encouragement that they are offering us from day to day from week to week. We thank you Lord that they are overcoming the strangeness of this situation. And so, Lord, we pray for this coming week, another new, two new strange situations, a church ADM on a screen, an alpha force on a screen. Lord, we just ask for your blessing upon our leadership and upon the events and the happenings in our church. We ask for your blessing upon each and every one of us and we thank you lord that you are the father who is with his children we thank you for this in jesus name and we ask that we be cheerful that that, that we be joyful in hope patient in affliction mm -hmm. and faithful in prayer in his name amen alan thank you as we come to the table, let me read to you some words from Paul's letter to the church in Colossians, chapter 1. 
For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Christ and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight. Without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel. As we come to the table in just these moments of quiet now, let us come to God and to confess our sins before him. For this is a table that reminds us that his blood shed for us was done so that we may be reconciled with God. His body was given up that we may be those who can be presented wholly before God forgiven of our sins, our past wiped clean, and are set free to serve him. But it reminds us of that part that we play, not in that act of salvation, but that in our desire to be more like him, to move from that old life that we've been thinking of in our passage this morning, to that new life that he gives to us in Christ, that we hold on this morning to the hope that we have in the good news that we can be a people who are forgiven. So in this quietness now, let's bring our confessions before God and ask indeed that he again graciously forgives us our sins. Father, we thank you for that reconciliation and forgiveness that comes not through anything that we can do or bring, but solely through what Christ has done for us. Lord, we cling to that hope this morning as we come to this table of grace to receive from you through these elements that speak of that sacrifice. That, Father, we may commit afresh to you this morning our lives and our hearts. Meet us in this act of worship, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus took of that bread, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body which is given for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. Then after supper, Jesus took of that cup And he proclaimed, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. We drink together, remembering all that Christ has done for us, proclaiming his death until he comes again.
Lord, in this simple meal, we see so much. And yet, in the simplicity of the truth that you loved us enough to send your Son into this world to die for us, we find our hope and we put our trust. Knowing that that transaction, in all the depths of what was done in this world and in the world that is to come, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we give you our lives and our hearts again, and we worship you for the amazing grace that you express towards us, not deserving it, and yet gratefully we receive it, thanking you for that salvation that is rich and free and given to us in Christ. Let us worship together in our final song this morning as Laura and the team lead us in amazing grace. How sweet the sound.
Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. And God's people said, Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship this morning. Thanks for those who've led us and those who've been working so hard behind the scenes to help us and enable us to worship this morning. Great to have you with us. If you're catching up with us in the week as well, we're glad that you've joined with us. Um, please do continue to connect with us in whatever way you're able and can. If you want to stay with us, we're going to be going into breakout groups after we stop recording. And uh, so if you want to stay with us, please do. If you do have to go on, well, then God bless you in this week to come. May that grace be indeed evident in your lives and in your hearts. Catch up with you as we go through the week and uh, look forward to that. So we're going to stop recording. God bless you. And thank you for being with us this morning.